questions and during the questions if necessary i will you know, work out i mean place the necessary details so there is this uh, question that um, can we really be continuously happy because um, it is said that happiness and unhappiness are both uh, part of the same like two sides of a coin and that uh, sometimes we are happy but then there are times when we are unhappy so can we really be continuously happy that is a question in fact in this uh, uh, <clears throat> chapter our focus is first to fix up our respiration right then later on we'll you know see whether it can really be realized or it cannot be realized so if we ask ourselves these three questions number 1 do we have a natural acceptance to be in a state of happiness so what will be naturally acceptable to you state of happiness or unhappiness happiness happiness so this is one thing which we can each one of us can verify similarly what is desirable for you prosperity or deprivation a feeling of prosperity or a feeling of deprivation feeling of prosperity feeling of prosperity the third question is that do you want this happiness in continuity or you want it sometime we want it in continuity but we are not able to get it or have it in continuity so is it really possible is the question yeah so my answer would be to begin with i would say let us fix up this aspiration then the whole course is essentially trying to investigate into this whether this is possible continuously or it is not possible continuously at all but at least let us fix up our aspiration if we do not fix up our aspiration rightly then even when we try fulfilling it and we fulfill it we are not satisfied we think that something is left so to begin with I, we are just trying to find out whether we want happiness or not whether we want happiness in continuity or not later on as we said through right understanding through fulfillment in relationship through physical facility we will be able to ensure continuity of happiness so we'll keep this question open right till we discuss about the details of how to ensure continuity of happiness and prosperity right so we will of course it is an important question but we will have to keep it open till we explore into the ways and means to ensure continuity of happiness prima facie it looks yes the way we have been going around right to get continuity of happiness we are not able to ensure continuity of happiness but the reason for this is not that it is not possible to be in a state of continuous happiness the reason is that we are trying to ensure continuity of happiness on the basis of physical facility which we have been producing more and more and consuming more and more trying to accumulate more and more, more. through that process it is not possible through the process of physical facility and accumulation of it and consumption of it it is not possible to ensure continuity of happiness yes that makes sense thank you yeah but i will keep this question open right so i do not that i have given answer to this i am keeping this question open that you know whether continuity of happiness is possible or not what i am saying here is that continuity of happiness is desirable right so this is one thing second is <clears throat> this idea that happiness and unhappiness is a part of life and they go together right 
this question also i will you know like to keep it open because the way we are going about ensuring happiness right this is, seems to be the condition for example if i am trying to get happiness by eating something tasty right there cannot be continuity of this so i get eating you know some taste of um, sweet and happen to like this right so i feel uh, you know happy about it and then i cannot keep it keep eating that sweet for all the time you know so after some time my stomach is full or the sweet is you know uh, exhausted then i feel unhappy about it that i can no more eat the sweet you know, and get the taste so presently the way we are going about ensuring happiness yes these two seems to be you know going together with every effort for happiness we end up in unhappiness so this also i will keep it open you know unless we talk about this possibility of getting happiness through right understanding through right feeling right which can be continuously there but that we will take up later so presently we will keep both these questions open number 1 this happiness can it be continuous and number 2 whether this happiness and happiness you know will go together or there is a possibility where you can be in a state of happiness in continuity yes regarding finding a person specific who is in a continuous state of continuous happiness i would only say that we have to look let us look into ourselves and see that you know the process which is being you know worked out here or described here let's go through the process and see whether our you know happiness is increasing every day or not and with that you know whether i see this possibility of being in a state of continuous happiness or not so this is what i would prefer to you know kind of uh, take as a basis rather than somebody else who has achieved this state so if somebody has achieved very good i'll take the inspiration from him if somebody has not achieved right i have to anyway work for it yes uh, very true uh, there is another question that if we be all become happy then this development will stop yes and uh, what we are talking about seems to be a very idealistic kind of uh, state and if we talk about this will it not mislead the next generation away from development away from making progress yeah this is interesting you know uh, <clears throat> today this uh, notion of development has become very important if we look at this development in the right sense of course it is important but what is this development right and what is this development for this question we have to ask right so in we are when we were just describing the essence of this thing we said yes development is required and we need to have a holistic development and this holistic development essentially means that we are in a state of continuous happiness and prosperity this is the real development that i as a human being if i am in a state of happiness and prosperity continuously then i am a developed human being and if you multiply this you know a family a society a nation you know the world is developed holistically if every human being is can live with happiness and prosperity in continuity so we certainly want development but what development means is essentially this that we are able to ensure 
happiness, prosperity, and continuity. For myself, for my family, for society, for everybody in the world. Or every human being in the whole existence. So with this perspective, if you see now, you can see that we are working for development, for holistic development, for ourselves and for everybody else. Today what we are doing in the name of development is, as I mentioned, trying to produce more and more physical facility, accumulate more and more physical facility, consume more and more physical facility. And we hope that through this, we will ensure continuity of happiness. Which does not happen. Which does not happen. Right. Physical facility is useful, right. is necessary. But physical facility alone will not ensure either happiness or prosperity in continuity. So this is the travel. Right. Now this question, you know, which is being asked is that if we are in a state of happiness, then development will stop or at least slow down. Right. This essentially presumes that development means more and more physical facility. And what we are saying is that physical facility is necessary, but physical facility alone is not sufficient for human being. Human being do need physical facility, but they also need this fulfillment in relationship with human being. And most fundamentally, it needs right understanding in the self because Without the right understanding in the self, we are likely to have all kind of wrong assumptions, wrong beliefs, wrong preconditionings. And once we have these wrong preconditionings, wrong beliefs, then we end up creating problem for ourselves and creating problem for others, both the human being and the rest of nature. So this we can clearly see. So what we are saying is that development in the real sense would mean this holistic development, which would mean creating a condition in the society where everybody is in a state of, I mean, a state of happiness and prosperity. And they are working for the happiness and prosperity for others. So that is the real development. And this is what we are working for. And if you do this, the real development will take place. But of course, when we are working for this real development, this pseudo development that we are calling development today, in terms of accumulating more and more physical facility and consuming more and more physical facility, that will slow down because that is unnecessary. And that is creating so much a problem all around for ourselves, for others, other human beings, and for the rest of nature. That kind of development can anyway not be supported by this nature, right, which has a defined and limited resources. So that kind of development is not fulfilling for human being. It is not fulfilling for the rest of nature. So it is not working anyway, and we are facing all kind of crisis, and we are looking for the solutions, right? So the solution is very simple, that we have to see things in its completeness. And when we see things, this nature, this existence in its completeness and the human being in that existence, we find that we as human being want to ensure continuity of happiness and prosperity, and that this can be ensured through ensuring right understanding in the self, fulfillment in relationship with human being and physical facility with rest of nature. And if you go by this, then we can see that the need for physical facility for human being is very defined. And what we need you know, as physical facility, we need it in a 
limited amount and nature has enough provision to ensure this fulfillment and we have the capacity to work with the rest of nature and produce more than what is required as a need and when we do that we feel prosperous and we are able to share with others making them feel prosperous yes. so development will stop in this sense you know we see the development today which is anyway in a deep trouble the real development will take place this holistic development will take place where we will have all these three things for every human being right understanding relationship and physical facility ensuring happiness and prosperity and its continuity for every human being in this society so real development will take place the pseudo development you know which is not necessary anyway will you know slow down so it is a desirable state not a idealistic state yeah, that is that is a bit, but all around uh, we are measuring gdp and gdp growth rate uh, in the company also my company also they are measuring profit profitability profit growth rate things like that yeah that is what i am saying yeah. that we have a pseudo True. model of development and under that you know we are trying to do all this and interesting thing is that if you look at this people world around the amount of physical facility at least which some of them have been able to accumulate is so large lakhs and crores of rupees not lakhs and crores but lakhs of crores of rupees mm -hmm. right? of assets and still they are not feeling fulfilled right they do not have that feeling of you know prosperity live around this happiness you know and one of the significant indicator of not having this feeling of prosperity is that when you feel prosperous you think of sharing with others when you feel deprived you think of exploiting others so if you look at it from this standard you will find that people who have assets worth you know thousands and lakhs of crores rupees they are still busy exploiting others and you can find enough example in the society today even in india now right we have people who have lakhs and crores of rupees lakhs of crores of rupees right 10 lakh crores 30 lakh crores 40 lakh crores like that you know that kind of asset we have developed and still we do not feel prosperous and therefore we do not think in terms of sharing with others but we keep thinking in terms of how to exploit the other further so this measure of how much i have accumulated is not the real measure measure of my happiness my prosperity and its continuity in fact it can be otherwise that if i go on accumulating more and more without feeling this you know sense of having enough and therefore that willingness to share with others rather than exploit the other then probably we are going further away from state of happiness prosperity and its continuity so this is what i would you know observe about what we are doing in the name of development today Uh, that seems regarding to be... regarding the availability of physical facility the interesting data is that you know we keep presenting this uh, data that 2011 this un has conducted the survey about how much we produce you know and how much is required and it turns out that we are producing six times what is required for all the people on this earth so there is enough physical facility being produced even now six times what is required 
so the problem is not that of production the problem is not that of availability of you know physical facility right it is basically the problem of distribution right some people are eating too much and you know falling sick becoming obese and some people are feeling deprived you know they do not have enough to eat so it is not that enough is not produced enough is produced six times but some people are meeting for others and therefore the others are feeling deprived so we produce something like 4.2 billion tons of uh, you know grain and the 700 crores people you know they need something like 0.7 billion ton so just six times what we are producing then what is required but because of this problem of distribution right some people are ending up as obese and some people are dying of malnutrition but interesting thing is that if you think in terms of production yes we are producing six times what is required right so the problem is that of distribution and if you look at the problem of distribution it is the problem of relationship because if we feel related to others we will anyway make arrangement to you know have this physical facility reach them and this problem of relationship is the problem of understanding so because we do not have the right understanding we do not have this feeling of relationship with others and because we are not having this feeling of relationship with others we are thinking in terms of exploiting others rather than nurturing others so if only we have right understanding we'll have that feeling of relationship and if we have this feeling of relationship then we are anyway producing far more than what is required six times so even today the problem is not that of lack of physical facility the problem is that of lack of right understanding and lack of feeling of relationship with others in fact the moment you feel related to someone you think of nurturing other the other person rather than exploiting him you are exploiting or thinking of exploiting only as long as you do not have this feeling of relationship with him this we have been discussing you know with lot of examples in our this course on uhb2 <coughs> that we have you know not talking about so the enough examples we have taken that the moment you switch from this feeling of relation to feeling of opposition right instead of nurturing others you think of exploiting others and vice versa so you can see this data this 4.2 billion tons is food produced right 11 may 2001 this survey conducted by this agriculture organization food and agriculture organization of united nation so people are dying of hunger not because of lack of physical facility people are dying of hunger due to lack of this feeling of relationship and the right understanding which is required as the base of having this feeling of relationship when we say um, that uh, right understanding is first priority uh, what about you know for people who may not have enough to eat i mean if we look at even maslow's theory um, that first we fulfill the physical needs and then we look at other things so how do we say that right understanding is first priority see i must repeat this what we are saying you know two things number one all three of them are required right understanding is required fulfillment in relationship with human being is required physical facility with rest of nature is required so all three of them are required we are not saying that you know have this or that we are saying that all three of them are required number one number two we are saying that when we are ensuring all three of them 
for a human being what is going to be the priority which one has to be ensured first right then next then next then the answer is that right understanding is the first priority relationship is the second priority physical facility is the third priority but then this does not mean that you know we will work for right understanding and not work for physical facility right for example look at the child okay now let us ask this question for the child let us look at the process what we do for the child the parents are anyway ensuring you know the physical facility for the child so the child is not expected to start producing facility physical facility right from the beginning right now what you want to do with the child now now that you are providing all the physical facility and you know to the child even if you have less physical facility you will provide enough for the child you know and do with less you know for yourself so what you want for the child is that the child should have a right kind of feeling for you and you should have the right kind of feeling for the child right physical facility in any way you are ensuring then you want that the child should have the right knowledge should have the right understanding right should be you know knowing what is right and what is not right in fact today we are sending our children to schools and colleges with this hope and we are willing to spend significant amount of our physical facility right for the purpose of education this is what we are doing already right for 15 years for 20 years right we are providing all the physical facility to our child, children and expecting him to develop this right knowledge right understanding right and also develop the right kind of feeling and we are not expecting them to produce physical facility immediately because somewhere deep down we understand that yes this is is important this understanding this right knowledge is important the right feeling is important right and if this child does not have that right feeling for us we feel hurt about it so we don't mind giving you know more and more physical facility to them but we certainly expect that they will have a feeling of respect for us a feeling of affection for us a feeling of care for us and when the children don't have that then we certainly feel hurt about it in fact i remember when we were conducting this course on uh, uhp in uh, tripura it hyderabad we conducted this survey the 180 students there we asked this question to the first year students as to what you want to do after you complete you know your graduation almost 50% of them said that we want to make our parents happy so they had that con concern you know that affection that care for their parents we asked the same question to the fourth year students only some four of them said that we want to take care of our parents make them happy now this feeling of affection this feeling of care has reduced from 90 students to four students in four years of our training so now this is the kind of education we are giving and when the children don't have this feeling for the parents and the parents feel very you know kind of hurt about it so you can see that you are not in fact expecting him to produce physical facility or make physical facility available to you you know till the age of you know 20 25 like engineering for example almost by the time you complete your engineering you are 22 years of age 
or when you have doing medical, you know, it is something like 26, 27 years. The parents are very willing to provide physical facility, but they expect that you have the right understanding, the right wisdom, the right knowledge, and you have the right feeling, which you do not develop in all these years. And therefore they feel very hurt and they are very concerned about it. So for human being, physical facility is required, but with physical facility alone, you would neither, neither be able to ensure continuity of happiness nor the prosperity for yourself or for others. So given this 25 years, we have to ensure this right understanding and relationship, the capacity to live with relationships, right feelings. And if we can do this, then <coughs> the every child who is going through this process of education will be in a state of harmony and happiness within and also live with harmony and happiness with other human beings, including the family members. So they will be in a state of continuous happiness and help others you know, to be in a state of happiness and harmony. Then they will also be able to identify their physical needs, fulfill that need by way of you know, production. Because by this time, with right understanding, they will have this mentality to produce and they will learn the necessary skills to produce. So they will have the capacity to do all three things, ensuring right understanding, ensuring relationship, ensuring physical facility. And through this, they will be able to ensure you know, happiness and prosperity for themselves and work for the happiness and prosperity for others. So this is what has to be done. Now this question of Maslow's need, you know, there are many theories which are developed on the basis of this giving first priority to physical facility. In fact, not only the first priority, giving the only priority to physical facility. But Maslow's hierarchy is better, better in the sense that it appreciates that there are other needs than the physical needs. But we have people who say that, you know, we should, put, you know, uh, have more physical facility, even at the cost of our values. Right. So we have economists which say that, you know, let's keep these values apart, you know, and work for accumulating more and more, because this is not the time that we can afford to be, you know, to have values. But at least, uh, Maslow, you know, is uh, uh, kind of uh, his thinking is broad enough to appreciate that yes, there are other needs, you know. So these physiological needs are there, and over that we have the need for safety and security, and then love and longingness, and then the self-esteem, and ultimately the self-actualization. This is the priority that he would say. Now, what we are proposing is seems to be the other way. We are saying right understanding in the self. So that self-actualization is the first, you know, and the first, most need. Right. So I would say that, yes, Maslow is at least appreciating that there are other needs, higher needs for human beings. So that is good. But as regards the priority, you know, I can say that if we are going with this animal consciousness, right? And we all begin with this animal consciousness anyway. Then this seems to be the priority. But if we start looking at the human being directly and looking at, you know, what is naturally acceptable to him, then we find that this hierarchy has to be just upside down. Right. So we have to first ensure right understanding in every child. With right understanding, he can have the right feeling in relationship and therefore fulfill relationship. With right understanding, he can identify the need of physical facility and have, will have the mentality to produce 
with rest of nature in a mutually enriching manner. So he will do that and therefore he will be able to ensure prosperity for himself. And through this happiness and prosperity for oneself, he will be, you know, wanting to work for the happiness and prosperity for others. So with right understanding, I will have the self-esteem, the right self-esteem, not the ego, but the right kind of self-respect. With right understanding, I can have this feeling of love and compassion for everyone. With right feeling, you know, I will feel safe and secure. Right? And with right feeling, I can produce more than what is required for me as physical facility. And when I produce more than what is required, I fulfill my physical need and the rest of it I share with others. So not that I accumulate, but I share with others. So if we can start with self-actualization, if we can start with right understanding, and it is possible, we are maybe giving 20 years to our children, right? To develop this right understanding, develop this right feeling, right thought. So if this 20 years of education is rightly utilized, then during these 20 years, we can ensure the first priority. We can ensure the second priority, <coughs> the fulfillment of the second priority. And we can prepare the child to work for the third priority also. That is, develop the necessary skills you know, for production right, during these 20 years. In fact, it should be possible you know, that with right understanding and right feeling, every child can learn something like 10 different types of production, 20 different types of skills for production. Right? We are wasting so much of time, you know, in other things, uh, very, you know, not so useful thing, you know, things. If you look at our children, look at the education way they are, you know, given education, they are spending and in fact, wasting a lot of time. So with this right understanding and right feeling and that willingness to produce by way of labor, you know, that mentality, the children can learn 10 to 20 skills for production during these 20 years. So of course, skills will be learned, but with the background of this right understanding and right feeling, then they will be in a state of happiness, you know, within themselves they will be able to fulfill this relationship with other human beings that will have that competence you know, to do that. And with that, they will be able to learn these skills and produce more than what is required. And therefore, you know, uh, develop this prosperity, ensure this prosperity for themselves. And because of this understanding and relationship, they will be willing to share with others. And they can share because they are producing more than what is required and they have a feeling of prosperity. So I would say that, you know, while uh, Maslow is appreciating the higher needs of human being, right? So they are higher needs, but they are basic needs. And they have to, can be fulfilled in this priority because we are anyway spending, 20, you know, uh, giving 20 years to the children Right, to work for right education, right understanding, right feeling, right thought, and so on. And with that, our expectation is that by the end of 20 years, they should be able to, 20 years, 25 years, they should be able to learn those skills of production also. And so that they can contribute meaningfully in the family and in the society for prosperity as well. So that should be the priority from my side. But as I said, all these are the proposals. You have to verify it yourself. Ask the same questions to yourself, which we have been asking here, and then see what is the answer that you get. For you, what is the priority? In fact, when we discuss this, instead of giving this priority from our side, we are asking people, you know, the students, the teachers who are attending the workshop as to what is their priority. And they all come up with this priority. So you can verify for yourself which one is the first priority. 
but keep this clear that we are not saying that physical facility is not important we are saying that all three of them are important and when we have to ensure them we can ensure them in this priority because that will facilitate you know things to happen so if we have the right understanding it will have it will facilitate relationship it will facilitate physical facility right on the other hand if we have lot of physical facility there is no guarantee that it will facilitate the right feeling right or the right understanding it might even be otherwise like we keep asking this question that if you are sitting in an air conditioned room with somebody you have a feeling of opposition for example your boss right now with this air condition running at 21 degree centigrade does it improve your feeling ask yourself yes yes so with this i think i'll leave it for you to verify and that sounds good but uh, you know for a person who doesn't have enough is dying of hunger then what would be the first priority and you know, they won't be able to work for right understanding when they don't have that kind of thing and there are so many people in the society today that are in that kind of state yeah but this is what we have already talked about that they are dying of hunger because there is no physical facility in this society or they are dying of hunger which are dying of hunger because there is lack of this relationship and right understanding in the people in the society this question has to be asked so yeah, overall it looks like there is you know more than enough but it is not reaching to the to everybody yeah so it is not reaching because there is lack of physical facility or it is not reaching because there is lack of relationship and lack of right understanding so what we have to do is to get uh, this right understanding or everybody should have that you know yeah yeah we are already producing six tanks <clears throat> and this six tanks is also no we are not counting many things probably we are producing even more than that i remember to have read this book called how the other half dies written by susan george and she writes very beautifully you know that <clears throat> by the time you read this book and presuming that you will take around 6 hours to read it 400 people would have died of hunger or hunger caused disease and then she she goes on to say that this is not because there is not enough but this is because one half is eating away right so much that the other half is dying of hunger so if you look at the statistics of the production statistics of the consumption right people who are consuming far more than the average 10 times 15 times right they are not even thinking that you know they are unnecessarily you know uh, putting up so much of weight becoming obese you know and on the other hand depriving others in fact they continue to uh, develop systems by which they can exploit these poor people further and more and more right this is what is happening i mean i will not describe what is happening you all would know or you can look into so much of it it is available in internet that how one you know group of people are exploited by other group of people one country is exploited by the another country and so on and for example said that how the earth is also you know exploited the nature is exploited
Yeah, we can see that that certainly is the case. Now, where do you place? You know, there are so many unhealthy people, obese, and so many things are there. Where do we place this priority, health priority? In all this, where where does health fit in? Yeah, in fact, first priority is right understanding. Second priority is relationship. The third priority, when it comes to I as an individual, is the health. And when I think in terms of ensuring my health of the body, then I have to identify the need for physical facility. So my need for physical facility and my concern for production, you know, is largely focused around this health of the body. So with right understanding, this third priority is basically, you know, working for ensuring the health of the body. So first priority that is right understanding, ensuring the health of the self. The second priority that is relationship with human being is ensuring the health of the relationship in the family, in the society. And the third priority is handling, you know, my <coughs> concern for the health. So health of the body. So health of the self, health of relationship around, and health of the body. Three things are mentioned, you know, ensured through these three priorities. So health is the third priority. So I have to take care of myself. I have to take care of my relationship with other human beings. And I have to take care of my health of the body. And I have to take care of all three of them. And while taking care of health of the body, I will also take care of the health of the rest of the physical world other than my body. So in that sense, I will ensure the mutual enrichment. Enrichment in the sense of my body, health of the body, and enrichment of all physical facility and the nature that I come across you know, and interact with. So right understanding in the self is ensuring my health of the self, fulfillment in the self. My relationship with other human being ensures the health of my relationship, that is my health and the health of my the other human being self. And the third one, the health of the body, the third priority is taking care of necessary physical facility for ensuring the health of the body physical facility in terms of consuming it and in terms of having it as an environment and also ensuring the mutual fulfillment with rest of the nature, the physical things. So health of this whole environment, the rest of nature, all physical things, chemical things and so on. So that is how these three things are covered. So my health comes in the third priority, but that does not mean that I'm just waiting for having right understanding and relationship and then only I will work for my health. No, the child will be given the right kind of environment by the family, by the parents for good health of the body. So by way of providing right kind of food, by providing right kind of lifestyle, you know, the daily routine, all that will be provided to the child by the parent. So the child will be able to take care of his health. The child will be able to, you know, pay attention to the right understanding, to the feelings in the relationship. And with that, he will also be, you know, able to take care of his body. And in this process, he will also learn how to take care of the body. So when we are saying physical facility with rest of nature, the basic, the basis for deciding what is required physical facility is basically the health of the body, nurturing of the body, protection of the body, right utilization of the body. That is how we can identify the need of physical facility. And we will do that when we are talking about this prosperity in more detail and identifying the need for physical facility. We will talk about all that. So when we, um... We keep mentioning this term human consciousness and animal consciousness. 
so why are we demeaning animals like that animals uh, also show some feeling some relationship with us so why do we say that this is animal consciousness when only physical facility is required they also have feelings yeah that is better if animals also have this need for relationship over and above physical facility that is good what we are saying is that while animals can you know feel satisfied with physical facility alone human beings cannot that is the idea basically that a cow for example if the cow is getting you know stomach full of grass it can chew that cut you know grass and just be comfortable you know you can see this cow sitting and chewing you know that grass with human being this is not the case if you are not having enough physical facility you are concerned about it you are working for it but when you have enough to eat right you cannot sit so comfortably as the cow is sitting in a chewing cut you have now 100 things to worry now look at those 100 things what are they and if you look at those 100 things they will certainly relate to this issue of relationship and issue of understanding so what maslow is saying is essentially that that if you start from down that is start from fulfilling your physical need then at one time you find that okay i have i am fulfilling my physical needs but this is not enough i want respect i want name i want fame right. so you start paying more attention to that i want security i want safety right all those things come in right and these things are very important for you and all these things have to do with relationship and when you are trying to you know ensure this fulfillment in relationship you see so many ups and downs right in relationship you want to fulfill relationship and you are doing your best and yet you don't get the response right? then you are frustrated you know you are depressed now you want a way out so somewhere that need for understanding is required you know is there <clears throat> you know i am able to see the relationship that it is there and i am able to ensure that feeling of relationship in me unconditionally then i can handle the relationship also but then i call you know it calls for right understanding in this self so for human being it is a very natural process that if it starts working with physical facility it has to start you know seeing the importance of relationship when it is working with relationship it sees the importance of understanding the knowledge the wisdom so all that comes in for human being for the animal it is fine you know as long as it gets physical facility it is fine with it if it gets some feeling in relationship it is better for the animal you know and therefore we should take care of that also but if it does not get and if you see you know this animals not coming in contact with human being they don't have this problem of seeking for you know kind of feelings from you right or from other if you look at the cow and the calf right first 15 days 20 days few months right the cow is very caring for the calf right? after that right for them physical facility becomes important that if you offer something to eat you know that same cow who was so caring for this calf will drive away the calf and eat if it is something of a it's liking for human being it is something which is you know which goes far beyond that that relationship is so important but why do we 
why do we need to compare animals at all? I mean, for animals, that is their nature. So what is wrong with that? Why do we compare? Why do we call this animal consciousness in human beings? Yeah, I mean, let me clarify this. This issue of demeaning, you know, what you mentioned. What we are saying is the following. The human being, the animals living with animal consciousness is fine. Human being living with human consciousness is also fine. But human being living with animal consciousness is the problem. This is what we are trying to say. We are not saying that animal consciousness in itself is bad. Animals living with animal consciousness is perfectly in order. Human being living with human consciousness is also in order, in harmony. But human being living with animal consciousness is the problem. Problem for himself, problem for others, problem for the whole nature. So this is what we are saying. Right. That we have to grow over this animal consciousness. For animals, this is quite okay. You know, this is what is desirable for the animal, to live with animal consciousness. For us, what is desirable is to live with human consciousness. So if we don't transform ourselves and live with this human consciousness, then we are in trouble. If we are continuing to live with animal consciousness, then we are creating problem for ourselves and for others. Animals are not creating problem for themselves or for others just living, you know, while living with animal consciousness. For them, it is quite fine. For us, it is not fine. And the major crisis that we are facing today, you know, the present civilization, or pre present prominent, predominant civilization, what we call it, modernity. The major problem we are facing today is this, that the whole society, the whole, you know, state, education, everything is geared to this human being living with animal consciousness. Human being living with animal consciousness. And therefore, more education creates more problem for us. More science, more technology creates more problem than the solution for ourselves and also for the rest of nature. So we are not demeaning the animals. We are respecting them, you know, in terms of animals living with animal consciousness, being in order, in harmony. But we are saying when it comes to human being, human being cannot afford to live with animal consciousness because that will not suffice for human being. And therefore, human being have to develop this human consciousness. And living with this human consciousness means ensuring all these three things, right and standing in the self the right feelings in relationship with human being and ultimately right kind of physical facility with rest of nature. That only will ensure continuity of happiness and prosperity. So certainly we are not demeaning the you know, animals. In fact, many times we uh, <clears throat> said that, okay, if you feel very uncomfortable with the animal consciousness, if it is pricking your conscious, you know, concerns, then uh, you can call it inhuman consciousness. So we are in a state of inhuman consciousness. We have to move to this state of human consciousness. Yes. But certainly we are respecting animal. You know, we are saying that animal conscious animals living with animal consciousness are fine. In fact, they are better than the human being living with animal consciousness. So prob so problem is with the human being. Human being living with animal consciousness. That is the problem. And that too, we are saying, you find out for yourself whether you want to continue with that kind of consciousness. If yes, fine, go ahead. If not, you know, see what we can do. Sometimes yes. even animals uh, seem to have uh, more uh, understanding the, that's why they are probably in harmony, isn't it? Yeah, whether we will call that as uh, understanding or not, I will give it an open question. But yes, they display better behavior. 
Hmm. I would say that. You know. So somewhere that feeling is there. Some feeling, some thought is there, on the basis of which they are displaying certain specific behaviors, which can be better than you know behavior of human being many times. That is true, but that is born out of understanding or just at the level of recognition, you know, that we have to keep open. I mean, one of the important, you know, in kind of indicator of this understanding, right understanding, is that if it is there, it continues to be there. You know, it does not change with the circumstances. Okay. So that, uh, you know, criterion we have to apply and see whether this, you know, happens with the animals or not. I mean, for example, if you look at human being, we are very nice to people, you know, we feel related to. But if the same person does not respond properly, right, then we might have a very different kind of feeling for him. Yes. Now, this fact that this feeling is changing is an indicator that this feeling is not born out of understanding. It is born out of the response or reaction from outside. And therefore, it does not have that continuity, that is stability. Mm -hmm. So, whether the animals have understanding or not, that is another issue which we keep open. But certainly, they display better behavior, you know, sometime than the human beings. In fact, human beings display so much of, you know, inhuman behavior. Yes. Which animals don't. Mm. Yeah. But that behavior is born out of right understanding, right feeling, or it is just, you know, born out of the response or reaction from outside. That we have to keep it open. Yeah. So, uh, Ganeshi, it is seven o'clock now. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Udelal Janji, Manisha Patil, Mahendra Singh Tyagi Ji, yeah, Vinay Ji has Vinay yes. Chitri Ji. Good morning, good morning, sir. It was a wonderful yes. session. Uh, when we say that animals uh, with uh, their animal consciousness, they feel satisfied when they get enough physical facility. Yes. And uh, we also say that uh, human being living with animal consciousness is a problem. Yes. Because uh, he will uh, uh, have animal consciousness and he will uh, like, uh, uh, or otherwise, when a human being feels satisfied with whatever is enough physical facility, then uh, he will never feel deprived. Is that is that true? And if a human being is feeling satisfied with enough physical facility, what is the problem? How he will uh, exploit the other uh, three uh, beings? No, what is the question? I mean, can you repeat just um, in a sense yeah. what you're asking? Uh -huh. We say that a human being living with animal consciousness is a problem. Yes. Now, animal consciousness or animals feel satisfied with enough facility, physical facility. Yes. And we also say that human should uh, feel prosperous. Yes. So prosperous means uh, satisfied with enough facility. Yes. So what is the difference? Why we say that a uh, human being with animal consciousness will be a problem? If he feels satisfied with enough physical facility, well, then how he is going to create a problem? If you feel satisfied with enough physical facility, there is no problem. But the problem is that he does not identify how much physical facility is required. Okay, okay. Okay, okay sir. Okay. And I that is understand. because of lack of right understanding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, for, understanding. for example, 10 lakhs crore worth of rupees or asset, is it enough for a lifetime? Okay. <laughs> More than enough. 
More than enough. Are we able to realize this? Uh, this? No, that animal consciousness not. Yes. So we are not able to identify that even 10 lakh crore is you know, enough. <laughs> right. Yes. We continue to exploit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Yes. So no animals will do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to calculate, you know, if we have 10 lakh crore worth of asset, then probably we can, you know, feed the whole world for years. Yes. <laughs> yes, the 700 crore people can be fed. Yes, sir. For years. But we don't realize this. True, true, true. No animal will accumulate so much. Mm -hmm. And at field be satisfied. Yeah, so understanding is basic difference between the animal consciousness and human consciousness. Yes, understanding and this feeling also, you know. Okay, okay. Feeling also for animal, it starts showing up this importance of feeling. Yes, sir. But the difference is that for us, this feeling becomes very important. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taking this example that in an air conditioned room, if I'm sitting with my boss with whom I have a feeling of opposition, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Then outside at the level of body, the temperature is okay, but inside the temperature is not okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, Udaylal Jainji. Yes, I was asking this question. हैदराबाद का जो रिपोर्ट बता रहे थे सर्वे का वो मुझे समझ नहीं आ रहा था तो मैं हिंदी में बताने बोल रहा था मैं इतना कह रहा था कि फर्स्ट ईयर में हम लोगों ने बच्चों को पूछा 180 बच्चों से कि भाई तुम्हारा क्या आगे का लक्ष्य क्या है क्या करना चाहते हो तो करीब करीब आधे बच्चों ने मतलब 90 बच्चे ने ये कहा कि हम अपने मां-बाप को खुश करना चाहते हैं ठीक है ना उसी समय फाइनल ईयर के बच्चों से पूछा हमने उसी पीरियड में कि भाई आप लोग क्या चाहते हैं तो सिर्फ चार बच्चों ने ये कहा कि हम अपने मां-बाप को खुश रखना चाहते हैं बाकी सब अपना कैरियर बनाने में व्यस्त हो गए और कैरियर का मतलब है गुड जॉब गुड यू नो फिजिकल फैसिलिटी यही मतलब है तो ये जो 90 बच्चे थे उसमें से चार ही बच्चे बचे हैं जो अभी भी मां-बाप को ध्यान देना चाह रहे हैं तो जिनका ध्यान अभी भी माँबाप के प्रति है, स्नेह है उनके प्रति, उनके प्रति जो है एक मोहम्मद तो है कि भाई उनका ध्यान हमको रखना है। तो चार साल की शिक्षा में हम उनको बिगाड़ रहे हैं कि बना रहे हैं। ये बात मैंने कही। हाँ बस भैया जी मैं इतना ही पूछने वाला था। तो हमारे साथ जो बच्चे पढ़ते थे चार बच में उसमें से ज्यादा तो लोग अमेरिका चले गए उस समय तो आईटी कानपुर को एक कहा जाता था कि ये 53rd स्टेट ऑफ अमेरिका है तो वहां चले गए वो अब इसमें से ज्यादा तो लोग मां-बाप का ध्यान रखने के लिए तो आ नहीं पाते हैं है ना और बहुत सारे लोगों के साथ तो ऐसा हुआ है कि उनके माता-पिताजी का जब ध्यान हुआ है तो नहीं पहुंच पाए क्योंकि वहां से यहां पहुंचने में दो दिन लग ही जाता है समय टू मेट कराने में दो दिन का समय लगता है तब तक तो वो हमारे यहाँ तो क्रीमेशन को रोकते नहीं हैं तो क्रीमेशन नहीं के समय तक नहीं पहुंच पाते हैं बाकी तो छोड़ दीजिए ये जो चार बच गए वो वो अपने घर के संस्कार के ही कारण होगा हाँ वही संभावना ज्यादा है कहाँ घर का संस्कार या कॉलेज में भी अच्छे टीचर तो होते ही हैं कुछ है ना कुछ अच्छे बच्चे होते ही हैं उनका सम, उनको संपर्क मिल जाए है ना तो उससे पर भी बच जाते हैं या नहीं ध्यान था बट मेन स्ट्रीम क्या कर रहा है मेन स्ट्रीम तो यही कह रहा है कि भाई तुम अपना कैरियर देखो कहां इधर उधर की चीजों में ध्यान भटका रहे जी तो जीआरई दो टोफल दो हमारे समय तो ऐसा होता था हमारे समय एक और ट्रेंड चला था कि आईएएस बनने के तैयारी करो 
तो वही सब चलता था मेन स्ट्रीम तो वही कहता है मेन स्ट्रीम कोई माँ बाप की बात ही नहीं करता आपके समाज के बारे में बात ही नहीं करता कि आपका परिवार के प्रति भी कोई जिम्मेदारी है समाज के प्रति भी कोई जिम्मेदारी है बल्कि अगर आप बाई योर ओन संस्कार अगर आप ऐसे कंसर्न उठाते भी हैं तो लोग कहते हैं कि कहाँ तुम भटक रहे हो जी करीब हैंड्स रेज ने अभी तो पच्चीस मिनट है डेढ़ मिनट बचता है आपने बस एक के लिए <laughs> तो हम ये सोच रहे हैं कि अगर टेक द क्वेश्चन ऑफ और कमेंट्स ऑफ ईच ऑफ दिस एवरीबॉडी एंड वी रिस्पॉन्ड इन यू नो एज अ होल एंड वी आल्सो वांट टू टेक द sort of comments of basho tinle uh, after this before we close and okay. pavan ji uh, pavan ji and basho you want to take their comments before we close so if we take uh, you know one one minute from each person their question uh, would it be okay ha theek hai na ji 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 to aisa kar lete hain baaki log ko kehte hain ki us pe likh de sabhi log ko चैट में एक तो उतना कर दें दूसरा हम लोग पवन जी और लुमतिन जी दासो को सुनने के बाद लौट आते हैं जितने हम प्रश्न ले सकते हैं उतना अच्छा है जी जी ठीक है अभी प्रायोरिटी में जो लोग अभी कुछ नए लोग जुड़े हैं उनको उनका प्रश्न ले लेंगे वही गणेश जी पुराने लोग तो हैं हम लोग के साथ जी 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 ठीक है सो विल uh request all the people who have raised their hands to please write down their question or comment in the chat box and we'll request uh pavan gupta ji to share his uh, takeaways or his uh, observations and then dasho's observations so pavan ji can you have your observations please <laughs> uh, sir namaskar sir ek choti si baat main bhi karna chahta hu ji ji kahiye kahiye सब अब एनिमल कॉन्शियसनेस के बारे में जानने के बाद एक मुझे तो एकदम इसके विपरीत भाव आते हैं कि जानवर भी अपने खाने की व्यवस्था के बाद संतुष्ट रहता है और आदमी तो रह नहीं रहा है तो एनिमल कॉन्शियसनेस से भी नहीं जी रहा है और जानवर अपने बच्चे का जब बच्चे को जन्म देता है तो उसका बहुत ध्यान रखता है आप व्यवहार में देख सकते हैं कि जैसे एक कुत्ता बच्चे देता तो उसको आस किसी को आड़ नहीं देता यहाँ भी यहाँ तक कि जंगल में भी जानवर अपने बच्चे को जन्म देता है तो उसको खाने वाले को आसपास पास आड़ नहीं देता बहुत ध्यान रखता है फिर उसको पालता है दूध पिलाता है या पक्षी को देखें तो दूर दूर से दाने लाके कुछ उसके खिला उसको देता है पालता है और जब सक्षम होता है तब उसको अपने काम के लिए छोड़ देता है उसके बाद में भी वो जब झुंड में रहते तो अपने झुंड का एक तरह की रक्षा भी करते हैं ऐसे हम वीडियो भी देखते हैं कि एक दूसरे की रक्षा करते हैं तो ये एनिमल कॉन्शियस से अगर इंसान जीने लगे तो ठीक है ना उसको एनिमल कॉन्शियस से ही जीना चाहिए जो तो ऐसा लगता है अगर बच्चे का लालन पालन कर रहे हैं उसको सक्षम बना ले झुंड में रहे एक दूसरे की रक्षा करे एक दूसरे की छीना झपटी नहीं करे इतना कर ले तो ये एनिमल कॉन्शियस से रहना तो ज्यादा ठीक है और ह्यूमन बींग जो है एनिमल कॉन्शियस से अगर हम मान रहे कि रह रहा है तो रह भी नहीं रहा ऐसा ऐसा मुझे लगता है ठीक कह रहे हैं देखिये ये जो ह्यूमन बीइंग है ना अगर वो एनिमल कॉन्शियसनेस के साथ रहेगा तो एनिमल से ज्यादा खराब रहेगा यही डिजाइन है इसलिए उसको ऊपर तो मूव करना ही पड़ेगा तो जो आपने कुत्तों को कहा कि कुत्तों के बारे की बच्चों का बहुत ध्यान रखते हैं है ना लेकिन एक गली में एक कुत्ता रह रहा है दूसरा कुत्ता आ जाएगा तो उसका वो दुश्मन बन जाता है उसको भगा के ही वो करता है ठीक है तो ये बात कुत्ते के साथ चल जाती है आदमी के साथ ये नहीं होता क्योंकि आप वहां रुकते नहीं है फिर आप सोचते हैं कि इससे थोड़ा और आगे बढ़ जाए और थोड़ा आगे बढ़ जाए फिर आप पूरे विश्व विजय कर लें ऐसा आप सोचते हैं है ना तो, तो जो कुत्ता अपने गली तक रह रहा था उसको प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती उसके कारण ज्यादा आपके साथ प्रॉब्लम ये होती है कि आप उसको फिर सोचते हैं कि पूरे विश्व तक ही चले जाए है ना तो अलेक्जेंडर के बारे बताते हैं कि अलेक्जेंडर जब भारत भारत आया तो उसने किसी साधु से मिला वो और उससे उसने कहा कि मैं विश्व विजय का है ना इच्छा से निकला हूँ तो इसके लिए हमको आशीर्वाद चाहिए आपका कि हम विश्व विजय कर सकें तो उस साधु ने कहा कि देखो तुम्हारी एक छोटी सी इच्छा हो गई कि विश्व विजय करना है 
उसके बस में उसका गुलाम बन के तुम दर दर के ठोकर खा रहे हो जब तुम एक छोटी सी इच्छा को अपने बस में नहीं कर पाए तो पूरा विश्व विजय करने का क्या मतलब है तो आदमी के साथ ये प्रॉब्लम है कुत्ते के साथ ये सुविधा है कि वो अपने गली से बाहर भगा दिया दूसरे कुत्ते को तो फिर अपने गली में रहता वो आराम से लेकिन सिकंदर जैसे लोग पूरे दुनिया में खाते हैं है ना जाकर झगड़ा करते हैं लड़ाई करते हैं और पूरा एक कल्चर बना देते हैं उसका और हम उसको ध्यान में नहीं रखते हम उसको सिकंदर महान बोलकर पढ़ाते हैं तो ये हमारे साथ क्राइसिस है तो हमको तो ये तय करना पड़ेगा कि भाई हमारा काम भी एनिमल कॉन्सियसनेस से चल जाएगा कि नहीं ये बात आप ठीक कह रहे हैं कि हम एनिमल कॉन्सियसनेस से भी खराब जीते हैं फिर जब हम एनिमल कॉन्सियसनेस के साथ जीने जाते हैं तो हम उससे भी ज्यादा खराब जीते हैं एक शेर है ना अपने लाइफ टाइम में कितने पशुओं को मारेगा खाने के लिए हम अपने लाइफ टाइम में साठ लाख लोगों को मार सकते हैं मरवा सकते हैं तो शेर का अगर पेट भरा होता है तो कुछ भी उनसे उनके आसपास से गुजरता रहे वो देखता भी नहीं है हम से जब वो भूख लगती है तभी ढूंढता है वो आदमी क्या है मार मार के जमा करता रहता है जी तो देखिए ना क्या क्या कर सकता है वो एक मैंने डॉक्यूमेंट्री देखी थी आ, क्या है वो एनिमल्स के बारे कि कैसे उसको इंडस्ट्री बना दी एनिमल्स का उन्होंने क्या नाम है राजू भाई उस इंडस्ट्री का या कुछ वो आई थिंक वो वो है कॉर्पोरेशन है शायद वाला है ऐसे कुछ नाम है एक और कुछ तो और एक है ऐसी कई सारी डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज हैं क्या इनकॉर्पोरेटेड है वो ऐसा कुछ है फूड इनका फूड इनका फूड इनका फूड इनके नाम से कभी उसको देखिए तो आपको पता चल जाएगा कि कोई भी एनिमल इतना रिचुअल नहीं हो सकता जितना हम हो जाते हैं बट ठीक है तीन बातें हुई एक तो ये हुआ कि एनिमल एनिमल कॉन्सियसनेस से जिए ठीक है आदमी आदमी के कॉन्सियसनेस से जिए ये ठीक है आदमी एनिमल कॉन्सियसनेस के साथ जीने जाता है तो एनिमल से भी ज्यादा खराब जीता है यही आप कहना चाह रहे कि नहीं जी मैं कहना जैसे आपने कुत्ते का एक्सट्रीम एग्जांपल लिया जैसे गाय है वो आराम से अपने झुंड में रहती है उसको भोजन मिलता आराम से रहती है तो किसी का छीनती है अगर आदमी भी इतने कॉन्शियस रह ले हाँ। अपने बच्चों को पाल लेती है आदमी इतनी कॉन्शियस रहते हैं एनिमल कॉन्शियस रह ले तो तो ठीक ठाक ही है लेकिन अगर हम उदाहरण देते हैं कि एनिमल कॉन्शियस रह रहा है उसको ह्यूमन में जाना है तो ह्यूमन में जाना है तो ठीक है लेकिन मुझे लग रहा है कि एनिमल कॉन्शियस भी नहीं जी रहा है एनिमल भी बहुत ही बहुत ही वातावरण के साथ में और अस्तित्व से रहते हैं तो यहाँ तक कि ठीक है इतना मुझे लगता है कि उनको कुत्ता भी शायद इसलिए भोगता है कि उसको इनसिक्योरिटी कहीं महसूस होती है कि दूसरा मेरी टेरिटरी में नहीं आ जाए पर वो दूसरे की टेरिटरी में जाने के लिए ही करता है जी। तो अगर इस इस भाव से भी हम अगर जीते हैं सिर्फ सीधा सीधा एनिमल कॉन्शियस तक ही जीते हैं तो भी शायद ठीक ठाक से जी सकते हैं लगता है उससे भी कहीं नीचे एक कोई कंसीडर किए थे जिसका कोई हम हो सकता अभी नाम नहीं दे पाए हूं जैसे भी था एक बात है एक बात है हम खराब हो जाते उससे ज्यादा हो ही गए हैं कोई भी एनिमल जो है प्रकृति को उतना नहीं बिगाड़ रहा जितना हम बिगाड़ रहे हैं और एनिमल के साथ हम प्यास रहते तो प्यास से रिस्पॉन्ड भी करता है एक बात और इंसान पे विराज विश्वास नहीं कर सकते कि अगर प्यास से रहते हैं तो प्यास से रेस्पॉन्ड करेगा क्या कभी उसका उल्टा भी कर सकता है कभी ये भाव भी रहता है <laughs> अगर सही संस्कार नहीं है तो ज्यादातर संभावना है कि उल्टा ही करेगा हाँ तो इसका मतलब एनिमल कॉन्शियस से भी नहीं रह रहा है पता नहीं कौन से रह रहा है इसको <laughs> पवन जी आप कुछ रिस्पॉन्ड करना चाहेंगे देर इज नथिंग मच टू रिस्पॉन्ड इट इज एब्सोल्युटली फाइन ऑल आई वुड से इज दैट 
the way the world is today, we need to also take into account how people are imbibing assumptions, beliefs, sanskars from the unknown. When I say unknown, in, from the environment. It's something like how a child learns his or her mother tongue at home. No one is teaching them the mother tongue and they learn it. It is a very, very different process, if we can call it a process. It's very different from the way language is taught in school. And they learn it perfectly well without uh, going through the grammar books. They learn the proverbs, they learn the idiom, they learn the nuances of that language. In fact, they learn it much better when, uh, than when they go to school and learn a different language. They get into the soul of the language at home. Something like that is happening, I feel, today uh, because of the one world that we keep talking about, that uh, India, what is what happens in America, whether in terms of physical facilities or more importantly, what happens at the level of thought and vichar and ideas and ideologies and so-called values, so-called values in the public domain. They, what they talk today, it reaches India within no time. It reaches other countries in no time. So in that way, we are a globalized world that we pick up things from different cultures, from different societies, from different civilizations, without discrimination, without examining, just like the child learns the language at home. That is a very positive thing. This is not a very positive thing. But somewhere I feel uh, something similar is happening behind it, the way we imbibe it. And when we start seeing, then uh, observing people, then we find that it has nothing to do with whether one is rich or poor whether one is a woman or a man, whether one is in the rural areas or in the urban areas, of course, the influence in urban areas is more. The influence among the English educated class is more. But it is not that it is not there in the villages or it is not there in the uh, not so uh, people who are not so familiar with the English language. It is there also. So this is shaping the mind. When I say shaping the mind, I mean it is shaping the perception very, very strongly. It is shaping the perception even to the extent that the way they think they understand, the way the modern educated person thinks that this is how I understand. There is, this is also an assumption. It takes a long time for the person to even understand what is understand. I mean, I'm, I'm taking a very extreme example, but uh, extreme case, but uh, this is the way it is. I mean, for instance, the belief in the written word, the belief in the uh, institutions like, let's say, a big institution like Harvard, a big institution like uh, WHO, uh, just a few names I'm taking, but there could be more. What they would say is taken as gospel truth without the ability to even, I mean, there's not even that thing that I must examine it. So information and knowledge has become completely, con it's been confused. So and in the process, information has become knowledge, things like that. So I feel that when we are, if you're talking of universal curriculum, yes. then we have to also think in a non-exclusive manner. 
when i say non exclusive meaning it is not for a small group of a selected people that we will be doing this it will be people in general and we should have that in our mind that how things are getting shaped in his or her mind and it is not only that individual but also the home from which that individual is coming the parents the entire environment there that is also vitiated i mean the parents minds is also working in almost the same way maybe the grandparents mind is not working in that way but they are discarded in any case so i feel we have to while talking of the proposal for the right we also need to take into account i mean i'm not talking of specific things i'm talking of the principles that are being utilized today in this modern world to share i believe it is a deliberate thing it is not happening uh, uh, it's not happening on its own there is a design to it and i think we need to understand that design and we need to address it and i believe it can be addressed so i'm just uh, this is my uh, view that this proposal there is nothing to add or subtract this is completely fine but this other side of this invisible uh, forces influences which are working on the everyone's mind this onslaught is very very strong this is invisible this is coming from all sides and if we can if we just pay attention we will understand what is happening over there and we can address it through our curriculum i believe we can do it so this is my uh, take away thank you yeah in fact i mean uh, <clears throat> what we have been doing is uh, you know taking both this uh, aspects uh, number 1 providing what is right and what we can do with that and secondly is that in the light of what is right we are you know thinking doing you know some little bit of uh, appraisal and evaluation of what is happening but yes the main emphasis here is to uh, kind of uh, try to explore into what is right you know and what could be the right kind of civilization but in the light of this yes it is possible to uh, uh, evaluate what is happening today and how it is influencing you know in fact when we we say civilization yes what you are saying is very correct that if you look at this as a civilization then all these you know aspects have to be uh, kind of uh, looked into you know the individual the family the society the nations the world you know all this uh, you know its economics and its politics and its you know sociology and all that you know are so interwoven uh, that they keep reinforcing each other so the very foundation of this civilization has to be kind of uh, looked into and evaluated and then also see how this uh, uh you know reflects uh, at different level and how it reinforces each other so all that uh, you know has to be understood and if we are thinking in terms of a human civilization then how we can bring this uh, to uh, reality and in the process how we have to face what is going on in the name of civilization today so all those things yes we have to look into um uh, just two things that we have uh, talked about you know uh, for today's session if you see we have said that if you look at the civilization today you know the very basis of this civilization is animal consciousness the human being living with animal consciousness so this is one uh, prajal one you know kind of uh, kind of uh, evaluation that we have done about the civilization today it, and then one citizen animal civilization i mean animal consciousness based civilization then it will have all kind of problems and we have mentioned just few of them but yes you know we can see 
And second thing we said that if it is you know, civilization which is basically prime moved by this animal consciousness, then it will largely focus on physical facility. And if it is largely focusing on physical facility, then it will have all kinds of problems. It cannot ensure continuity of happiness. It cannot ensure continuity of prosperity. It will tend to exploit others, you know, be violent to others. And any amount of exploitation and any amount of you know, accumulation will not give this feeling of prosperity. And therefore, it will go on from bad to worse. So all these things we have implicitly uh, kind of uh, uh, talked about just making as a ref you know, passing reference. But yes, in a sense, we have said that a civilization can be a human civilization based on human consciousness, or it can be an inhuman civilization based on animal consciousness. But yes, I think, you know, we have to be very cautious and aware of whatever is going on and how we can uh, at least not get influenced by the same kind of thing because it is very subtle in the way it comes and overpowers us. It is uh, very subtle many times. So we have to be really um, watchful about it. Yes. Yeah, very true. Um. Okay, so we uh, take some observation from Dasho and then we'll stop for today. Yeah. Questions? Uh, all people are listening. We can. We'll take all the questions in the chat box, Kanesi, and then we'll uh, circulate them. Uh, we will uh, uh, try to respond to them tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll stop with the comment from Dasho if yeah. he wants to make any observation. Um, good morning, uh, Ganeshi and all the people who are um, in this group, uh, particularly the new ones. Good morning. Good morning. I have, uh, just two or three small observations. Uh, one is, um, I'm very happy that this is happening uh, in the format that we have laid out starting today where uh, Ganeshji is providing some background on the main topic that we are going to discuss. And then we go to the main questions of frequently asked questions. And then even that one uh, as um, somebody asking this question and Ganeshji responding to it uh, is very natural and very, very useful. So the whole process of it, I found it very useful. And uh, I think, um, Personally, I felt very happy because um, this is a way forward for preparing our resource persons. Um, I have sat through these workshops many, many times and um, I teach in a team um, and I sit uh, through uh, each of the lectures of all my teams because I learn from it. But I think this, uh, the way that we are doing uh, in the frequently asked questions, um, I find it very useful uh, for people who are trying to work themselves up to teach this and share it with others. And this is very important, I think. Um, does the second one um, that I would like to... Um, comment is um, I was just looking through the list of the participants today and so um, out of the in the I, I can only check the Bhutanese team uh, Bhutanese people by the names and um, I saw that out of the 10 or 12 people I might have recommended and put them uh, requested for the um, uh, requested them to join at least three or four of them have joined. Um, like Kezang Wang Chuk had joined. Pema Doji, I'm not quite sure whether it comes from um, the college of uh, Lungkes College and Chiki Wang Chuk. But I can also see Kinle Dem who has joined and Seong Hadden that has joined. 
and um, I felt I was successful in terms of recommending people in it. And if three out of the 10 join, uh, that's quite a good success. And I keep on also saying that uh, the people uh, who consider this to be important and they have to consider this one to be important if they can get up at 6.30 or 6 o'clock in Bhutan and then uh, sit through these two hours. Uh, they have to consider themselves as lucky in a way and they are merited and they have the right sanskar to do this. Mm. And um, I would like to congratulate them. Uh, and I would like to also congratulate whoever has joined as new persons uh, today, uh, because I really truly believe that this uh, can only happen because you think that this is important. And that happens only because your sanskar uh, put you into that situation to consider it important. So uh, I would like to congratulate each one of you who have joined new uh, to this workshop. And as, as it goes on, I'm sure you will find most engaging. And I find it every morning, the two hours that I sit through, like a uh, meditation that I'm sitting through, I feel completely fresh after this. Uh, and that is good enough for me to pull through the day. The next takeaway I had was I was checking myself on my own feeling about um, the people who did not join. And I found that I am not really reacting. I would have otherwise. Um, felt that having put through so much effort to put them on this uh, morning um, session, that seven out of the 10 or 12 um, have not joined and I would have felt really uh, bad about it. But uh, no, I think I, I, under, I can now understand and say, yes, they must have had some reason and eventually they will join. And my responsibility was to show them uh, and uh, they have to come and do it. And then eventually they'll do it. The truth about any seed is we can plant and when it is right condition, it grows. So that is the second thing as third thing, I think my takeaway for myself that I did not react, but I responded to it. Uh, speaks a little bit about my own understanding through this long journey. Um, I think um, actually, apart from this, I haven't got um, much really to say. And um, through the whole session, um, I did not think that um, as we were going through these um, questions, as well as, as Ganesh gave us the background, uh, it was repetition and it was boring. I think each session that I sit through, I learn something. There are many small takeaways from each of these questions as well as Kanishji's uh, um, review of this uh, particular topic um, of human asp aspiration and what makes us happy and what do we have to have for full development of the person. Uh, so um, thank you very much. And I'm extremely happy that this is uh, happening. And I'd like to, again, once again, congratulate all those people who have joined new to this session. Uh, I can only say that you would find it most rewarding as it proceeds. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dasho. <coughs> Okay, Rajulji, then. Yeah, so then uh, uh, it's very, I would say, as Dasho mentioned, uh, the merit, the sanskar is there. So I can welcome all the new participants and re-welcome all the participants who have been there before. 
um, if they have any suggestions please write to us uh, so that we'll incorporate those suggestions uh, this is a joint you know family workshop you know whatever we are doing is as a team so please share your ideas also so we can incorporate those so we'll see you tomorrow uh, morning in, in in the morning we'll send you the questions for tomorrow um, and the questions that were sent yesterday they are there in the link uh, which is in your uh, in the mail that is being sent so please go to the link download the questions uh, download other material that is there somebody was asking for the presentation that is already there i'll update it with whatever we have updated today so this whole exercise is for all of us to you know co-develop uh, individually and also in our you know what we are doing as as teachers as parents as uh, responsible people in the society so it is for all that so uh, we'll close here ganeshi and we'll uh, meet tomorrow morning 5:30 thank you very much